Hello, here is an introduction to Rhino. I am using Rhino 6. Uh, you could be using Rhino 5. It's, the, it's not such of a difference. Or even Rhino 7 was in beta. Um, don't use Rhino 4. That's a bit too old. Um, if you want to... Um, when you save, if you're working with someone who's used Rhino 5, you can save as a Rhino 5 or 6, you see. Or even older so remember this so let's get started all of Rhino is here through uh, those menu you don't have to access this way but pretty much all of Rhino is here this is the command line where we'll be typing command you don't have to put your cursor here it could be anywhere and you can just type this is some tab that's been introduced in Rhino 4 and 5, uh, even 6. Now, I don't really use this. They are just shortcuts. It's like open, print, save. So it's the same as going file open or file save. So when we won't talk about this. This, I also rarely use it. I'll show you what it is. Uh, you can, if you want, this is two main tab with shortcuts. So let's say we have the box. And we have the same box here. But you can also type it. The thing I'm not a huge fan with this is that if you right click here, you see they have a lot more. And if you were to turn each of them is a, a tab huh, with many icons. If you were to turn, uh, let me turn one or two on so you can see. If you were to turn all of them on, you'd have a full screen full of icons. And it's really confusing. So we'll leave it them here for now, but sometime I even hide those two. Here is very interesting. We have the property of our object. So if we draw a box, we'll uh, see the box name, its size. I've rarely used this. Layers are great, and I'll be teaching you layers. It's pretty much like Photoshop. They are here and there. But I don't really use them in jewelry or product design. I would use this more if I use Rhino for architecture. But we'll learn them. Render, I never use this. Uh, the Rhino render, even the new one, it's nothing. Uh, it's it's really, uh, it doesn't compare to Modo or Keyshot. Or, uh, I wish rend um, Rhino would use uh, Modo or PhotoView like SolidWorks did, but whatever. This is the rendering, those two. I do this elsewhere. Uh, this is also rendering. It's very simple. You can just drag and drop. Uh, and the help is excellent, especially when, you, you, when you're when you new. Because in Rhino, if you draw something, it knows what kind of help you want. You see, I, I just drew a box. And now it's giving me the help of the box with a movie and all of the box option. So it's very, very useful. But when you get good at it, you don't want to see any of this because it takes a lot of real estate, a lot of room on the screen. So to hide this, you click here and you go close. If you do need to bring it back to use the help or the property, you go panel. And any of those will bring it back. You see help and we're back there. Once again, you click here and you go close. On the bottom here, it's very useful, we have uh, our grid snap, our object snap, and all of the snapping tool, and we have the millimeter here, and the layer. So by default, I like to have grid snap off, that's snapping to the grid, ortho off, that means vertical or horizontal or perpendicular, planar off, but I like to have object snap, so if I'm snapping to an object, it's on. And by default, I like to have N. It'll snap to the end of an object, near as anywhere you are. Mid is halfway through a line. And intersection is where two lines intersect. So this is the default I like to have. And sometimes I would turn on or off something different. Um, by default, Rhino runs in millimeter. And this is great if you work in Europe, almost anywhere in the world. If you do jewelry, guitar making, violin making. But if you do architecture in North America, you will want to have imperial feet or inches. So we could type units and enter. But it's not the best way. Because if you change it here, 
it would only change this, but it won't change the grid or the font size for your dimension. Meaning, when you're in millimeter, you've got a grid which is equal to 10. But as you know, if you use feet or inches, you need 12. So to change this, I would rather go File, New. I don't need to save. I didn't draw anything. And use a template. So you see, for feet, I would use a small feet or small inch. What Rhino calls small, it's any object smaller than a truck. So it's pretty big. So if you are doing a, a table or a sofa, you would be in small. But if you're doing a house, you'll be in large. Okay, I'll stay in small mill. So when you do a template, it changed the units, it changed the grid, as you can tell, and the font size. Now, how do we orbit? Right click and drag. That's how you orbit in Rhino. How do we zoom? We spin the scroll and it zoom where your cursor is. And how do we pan? Shift, we hold shift on the keyboard and we right click. To maximize a view, you double click on it. So the perspective, the front, the top, front and right. So this is three quarter with perspective, so the lines are not parallel. This is orthographic, where every line is parallel. This is viewing from the top to the bottom. This is the side, uh, the front, this is the side. They are all quite useful. Um, to bring an object, there's three ways of doing it. One way we go, let's say, solid box, and we pick the first one. This one wants us to define one corner, the other corner, and then the height of the box. So the first corner, we click anywhere. The second corner, you see, other corner. And then he wants to know the height. Voila. So we have an object. When we click on an object, it turns yellow. It means it's selected. If you want to get rid of it, you press delete. To undo is Ctrl Z. And usually the perspective, I click here and I like to have it in shaded. It just makes more sense. And I usually keep those one wireframe the way it is. And sometimes I mean, uh, I double click, I'm in full view. Sometimes I'm in full view. It really depends what I'm doing. So when we have an object like this, we have the gumball, it's this thing that I usually leave it on. Those arrows are meant for moving, so if you click here, you can move up. One thing to remember, because Rhino is made for fabricating, Z is up. So X, Y, it's almost like a CNC table or a drafting table. X and Y, and when you do your elevation, you elevate in Z. So the blue is the Z, or Z. <laughs> X is left and right, you see, I click and right. And uh, green, I think, is the depth. It's the Y. Uh, that little square means two axes at once. I mean, here I'm not dealing with the depth. I'm just going left, right, up, and down. Sometimes it's useful. If you click quickly and release, you can type a unit. So you could say 10, and it will move it up 10 mil. Or, undo. or you could go minus 10. And do. Uh, we can do the same with those square. So this is the scaling. And we could type a per percentage. So 0.2, 20%, it would shrink. And do. Here is the depth, 0.5, so you could just drag. And here we have the arc. So the blue rotates around that pipe going up. Uh, think of a pole, like a firefighter pole, and you're going to rotate around that. So usually I would just type maybe 45 degree. So this one is in degree. Uh, and two last thing, with any tool on the go ball, if you press Alt before clicking, it will give you a copy. That's what Alt does. Control Z, Control Z, and 
if you press shift with the scale, you would scale uniformly the three axes at once. Voila. Delete. So like I say, we can define a box this way. Let's redo it. Corner to corner to the height. But we can also do it here. This is the same. We click. So some people like using the icon. Now if we click and hold here, again, we have all of the options that we have here. Actually here there's more. There's five. The other one had four. But pretty much the same. But me, I, I don't really use this or this. Instead, I put the mouse anywhere and I type B, enter. You see B types box. Sometimes you have to go B O, um, but B usually is enough. And now enter, it asks you. So if I want, let's say, to do a center rectangle, I can click on center here. This is the option. And I can click and now we draw a rectangle from the center. Okay? Here is another example. B, enter. Now I can do center. And if I wanted really that center, I can just type zero. You don't have to do zero comma zero. And now let's say I want the end to be rounded. Actually, this will be with a rectangle. I won't do that with this. So forget this. Voila. And you might wonder, how do I type dimension? So same principle, box, first corner, zero. And it say, what is the length? So now we are in mil, so I could go 60 mil. What is the width? 8 mil. What is the height? Uh, 3 mil. And now it has dimension. If you want to see the dimension, make sure and near mid end is on. You can type dim, like dimension. That's only if you want to print to screen the dimension. Click here and click here. And because we use a template, the size is correct. To redo a command on a Rhino, it's right click or spacebar and enter. On Macintosh, it's better to use enter. So when I right click, it did dim again. I'm going to right click again and here I cannot do the height because as perspective is flat. So I'll zoom here and do the height here, you see. And this is kind of a, a blueprint that we could go file and print to give it to someone. But if you know that your dimensions are correct, you don't need to uh, bring it on the screen. So let's try to build a simple shelf uh, box. Voila. To make a copy, Alt. Alt again. To rotate one, you click here and you go 90 and you move it. You can move it back a little bit. And Alt again. We could do a mirror, but here, if we're just doing conceptual, it's fine. And I actually need two more, so I go Alt again. And I know it's not equally spaced, but it's fine. Voila. Something like this. There's a mode called Render, but it can be nice because it, uh, it has that nice ambient occlusion soft look. If you use this, don't stay in it. Just go back after two shading. Uh, so now what I can do, I want to make a hole. So this is new. I don't think I showed this in class. So I'm going to move this here. And I'm going to use a command called Boolean Difference. So, and it wants Boolean Difference. It'll cut. And always select the one that will receive the cut. So you're going to select this and enter to go to the next question. And who's going to cut? It's those one. Enter. So now you see we've cut this. Now the problem is that we lost the other one. So what you can do is make a copy of this or better in the Boolean difference. Sorry. 
there's an option. So I'm going to subtract from control to deselect from those two. You see delete input yes, you say no. And now we're good. So now they stay. And now I can move those. Well, using the green. This is really quick and dirty. And I'll go Boolean difference. And uh, let me just deselect Boolean. And this time will be the, those one will receive the cut. So we'll be cutting with this. Oh, sorry. I only grabbed one, so let's redo it. It worked, but I forgot to grab this one. Uh, Boolean difference. Wait. Right click or enter to go to the next question. And voila. So now that's all good. The only thing we have to do is rotate this the other way. So we'll go 180. Voila. Okay, I think for a start, it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, well, uh, this is really conceptual. Huh? It's not precise at all. Uh, okay, that's it.